Today we're going to show you how to prepare an OEM fender and get it ready for paint. OEM stands for Original Equipment Manufacturer and what that means is it's a, for example, if it's a, this is a Honda fender and it came from Honda and we're going to show you how to, to prepare that. OEM fenders have what you call an e-code on it and that's to help uh, prevent corrosion and it also provides good adhesion for your next layers. So the way you prepare an OEM fender as opposed to maybe a used fender or an aftermarket fender will have a different repair method. So we're going to have Devin today to show us how, how to do that. Uh, before we do anything with the fender, we first need to make sure we have all the supplies that are needed. Uh, to start off, we need to make sure that we have all our recommended safety equipment, which includes uh, safety glasses, an approved dust mask um, and or respirator depending on what you're using but today we'll use a dust mask some latex gloves and we also have our DA sander uh, four or five hundred grit sandpaper which today we'll be using five hundred an inner surface sanding pad which goes on the DA it just helps for a even sanding surface on the fender itself um, we have a maroon scuff pad that we'll use to scuff the e-coat on the fender. Uh, to prepare, we'll have to wash the fender, which we'll use some regular dish soap, ivory soap works. And we have a bucket, we'll get some water in it, and then we have our wax and grease remover and our shop towels. All right, we we'll first start off, uh, before we do any type of repair work or refinish work to anything, we always need to make sure that we wash the product first, um, which in this case, we'll be using some ivory dish soap like we showed you earlier. Um, we use this because it gets off all the wax and grease materials. It completely cleans the contaminants off the fender in this case, um, where with normal car soap that you might use, you know, washing your car or whatever, some of that product's actually not made to get all of the grease off. Um, and in this case, we want a nice clean surface before we start any of our refinished work. One thing you always want to make sure is, uh, you know, you completely wash the entire fender. You want to get all the edges and everything, make sure that all of it's nice and cleaned off so that we don't have any grease, wax, or dirt products, anything like that on there. And this just helps, by having a clean surface, this kind of helps you, uh, like say when you go to actually paint the product, it helps eliminate like a lot of paint defects, uh, fish eyes, paint peeling, anything like that. So you always want to make sure that you clean any, any material that you're working on thoroughly. Um, this is one step that a lot of times does get overlooked. So you want to make sure you get, get it nice and clean before you start. And after you get it all wiped down, You'll just want to take some uh, like running water from your hose or uh, whatever you might get your water from and just thoroughly wash it off. Uh, just let the water run down the product and you know don't actually spray it down, you know, power wash or anything. So. And that's what we'll do next is we'll just completely wash it off, get it cleaned. Uh, after we get it washed off, we'll go ahead and dry it. If you have the time, you can let it air dry, or you can take and use a uh, blow-off gun and, you know, help speed up the process. Okay, uh, now our second step after uh, drying the fender is we're going to use some wax and grease remover. Uh, in this case, we're using shop line wax and grease remover. You want to make sure that you have two separate shop rags when you're doing this, one to use with the wax and grease remover and then one to actually dry it off with. And you'll just take some of this and get it on a rag. And whenever you're using this, you always want to make sure you do small sections at a time. You don't want to wipe off the entire fender and then start drying it. Um, you don't want this stuff to dry on its own. You want to actually wipe it dry. 
wipe a little bit at a time and make sure you get the edges with it also and you want to take your dry rag And what this helps does is just in case there's any dirt or contaminants left on the fender after we wash it with soap and water, um, this will remove all anything that's left on here. So it'll be nice and clean. Our next step. Uh, we'll be take a uh, maroon scuff pad and what we're going to do is we're going to scuff the inside jams and the inside lips, the edge pieces on the fender. Um, this will allow us, when we go to paint the fender, we'll be able to paint on the jams too so that they match. Um, some paint manufacturers say that on the factory e-coat um, you can paint and seal right over the e-coat after you get it clean. Um, we, uh, you know, we recommend just taking an extra step just to be safe. Um, go ahead and, and scuff in the inside jams, uh, scuffing up the factory e-coat, and what that will do is allow, allow us that when we go to paint, it will give the paint something extra to bite to, so we don't have to worry about it peeling up later. And all you'll do is you'll just take your scuff pad and lightly scuff the jam areas. Our uh, next step after we uh, scuffed up the edges will be to uh, take take our DA with our inner surface pad on there and our we have 500 grit sandpaper. Um, you can do 400, 500 depending on you know the material and what you want to use. Um, today we're going to use 500. You can use a DA or you can also hand sand. Um, what you want to do also is just like when we were scuffing, you want to make sure that you don't actually sand all the way down through. The e coat, you'll want to leave that e coat on there. You just want to rough it up some, um, gives our paint something to stick to. Um, you want to make sure that while we're doing this, you don't on the edges, you don't you know sand through. And whatever, after we get done sanding um, with our DA, if we have some area left on the by the edges, we'll go ahead and scuff those up just to make sure that everything's roughed up and um, so none of our paint will peel from the edges, corners, or anything like that. So. All right, now after we're done uh, sanding, you can still kind of see that we have a little couple areas that we didn't quite get, so we're going to go back with our scuff pad and get those. Um, you can also see we have some areas that we burnt through on here, which we try not to do that, but it will normally always happen. So we'll just come back after we scuff it. And we'll put some uh, self-etching primer on those to cover those up. Um, after we get all this done, we'll go ahead and move it into the uh, paint booth and we'll clean it off one last time. And then we'll it'll be ready for uh, paint. 